I've already been told that we are sponsored by Freddie O's Tires. Vic Purnell, number 37, going out for WKU. Big Bird hit by a cross. Big Bird hit on the foot there going out. Yeah, Vic is definitely out. 37 is definitely out for WKU. All right, boys, I'm going to have to sign off. I'm going to head out, but I will see you guys later tonight. And definitely for the broadcast tomorrow, that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to do some of those rounds. Looks like we're going to be the only ones commentating, right? That is probably the truth. Yeah, well, that'll be awesome. Um, can't wait. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to come to the captain's meeting, but uh, I'll let you guys know, all right? See you, Benny. Signing off. Well, it's me and Mr. Heichel back now getting real comfy in this booth. The Menage booth just became a... A duo booth. Good old-fashioned Irish Catholic booth. <laughs> My favorite type of booth. So I think we saw kind of a hybrid there between the aggressive style during the VCU game and at times, not so much, but a little bit of passive play from WKU. You know, I think in this situation, I think the passive, the passive play, I don't think it's stemming from any kind of fear. I think at this point, it's just it's people are tired. I mean, you're noticing a lot of the people that were big throwers or big playmakers uh, in the first couple of games just aren't able to, you know, put quite the oomph in at the head before. And, I mean, that's a big thing is even though this is their last game of the day, they've only got a few – they've only got, you know, 14 hours to recover. So you don't want to completely wear yourself out today. Yeah, self-preservation becoming increasingly important as the day wears on. WKU with two players out. DePaul with four. Nice kill there by number eight, Josh Hicks, on number 20 of DePaul. That shot there takes out number 30 of DePaul. Oh, a near cross court there. As Josh Wynn takes a shot at number 25 for DePaul. Number 25 being Kevin Campbell. And a, and a very well-intentioned counterattack leads to a catch by number 55, Brian Heimel of DePaul, taking out number 77, Zach Kelsey. WKU needs to be careful here. They're falling victim to that overconfidence that we had talked about, particularly plagued a lot of my teams coming out, having a very impressive first point, and then getting a little too full of yourself and falling flat in the second point. Yeah, and you will notice um, it looks like DePaul swapped out a good bit of the roster that time. I'm not familiar enough with their players, but I see a lot of people in this round that weren't in last round. So maybe some sandbagging going on from DePaul. Quite possibly. And a great, great catch there by number 44, Josh Wynn. And a quick kill. That takes out Austin Downs, 58, on the kill. And he got out. I believe that was number 55, Brian Heimel on the throw. So Josh Wynn having a very impressive point here. Keep an eye on number 20, Everett Taylor for WKU. 
has had some really amazing point blank catches. Great, speaking of which, a great catch there from number 18, Cameron Murray Hicks. He likes to say that he's not a good catcher, but I've seen enough of those to know that that's not exactly true. Oh, a nice attempted catch there by Big Bird. Does not work out. The former WKU captain is retired. Great block there by Nick Johnson. Blocking was originally Nick's job the last time that Nationals was here. That was his primary job, was blocking for the throwers on the team. So Nick, very familiar, was staring down the barrel of the gun. We have a question uh, from Kim. Does anyone know when CMU plays again? Kim, they play in round number seven, which starts at six o'clock central time against VCU. Well, Alex, any talk, I think, of uh, teams letting the other win to establish a seeding preference for tomorrow's single elimination bracket. It's kind of gone out the window. It seems like these two teams are really going at it. Yeah, I agree, and I think, I, I like to think there's no teams here that would try to do that, would try to fiddle with the bracket. Um, while people here do love this sport, I don't think anyone takes it that seriously to where they would, you know, intentionally lose a game. Uh, and that's one thing I really like about this sport. We've never had, to the best of my knowledge, never had any scandals, so to speak. So, No scandals so far. Uh, 25 absolutely doing work. Uh, that is Kevin Campbell for DePaul. Six still in for uh, DePaul. Six still in for DePaul, Alex tells me. Kim, you're very welcome. We're glad you're enjoying the live feed. Be sure to check out the next round. We've got some great games coming up. Myself and Ryan Men will be calling the Maryland versus Kent State game. If you haven't seen it yet, go back and check out the Michigan State versus Kent game that just wrapped last round. Probably the most exciting game of dodgeball I've ever seen live. A 1v1 showdown in overtime between the two captains of those teams was absolutely an electric moment. I would encourage anyone to go watch that if you haven't seen it. Meanwhile, in this game, Samuel Murphy, Murph Doggy Dog, Number 51 for DePaul goes out, slams his hat down, has to come back on the court to pick it up. Probably not the smartest move to be throwing your clothing around after you get out, but what do I know? I it was just the hat. I think uh, undoubtedly DePaul, again rocking the most fashionable uniforms in the entire league. Yeah, a lot of variety. You got your powder blue, you got your dark blue. Uh, I will say they are behind one thing that maybe you didn't see, uh, Townsend. It's like they sent out a memo that everyone had to have at least one neon piece of clothing. Nice catch there by Nick Johnson. Takes out number 20, Matt McCabe for DePaul, which takes them down to four players. And it looks like now six in for WKU. So a nice swing there. Number 30, Alex, Alex Scott with a couple of nifty dodges there. Oh, and an attempted catch there. Takes out number 44, Josh Wynn. The kill credited to Alex Scott there. Nick Johnson throws right into the waiting arms of Kevin Campbell for DePaul. Kevin absolutely doing work at this point. Four players left in for WKU. Looks to be uh, five left in for DePaul. Thirty goes out there on a great shot by Everett Taylor. Known for his catching, but also has a pretty nice little arm. Looked like that hit ground, so no catch. 
Number 30, Will Angermeyer. Actually the little brother of Andrew the Survivor Swanson. And a great catch there by Everett. Takes out number 14. Don't have a number for her. Wow, a great catch. I have no idea who this guy is. He does not have a number on his jersey. Six minutes. I think it's time for a sponsor break. Alex, let's turn it over to you. Who is another sponsor of this game? Go ahead. Thank you for that uh, brief break there, Alex. Very well said. So a timeout by WKU. I think they sense that this point is kind of beginning to slip away a little bit, and they have got to pull it together here if they want to secure this point going into halftime. And we are back underway. Three, six minutes remain. Three players left in for WKU. Four players in for DePaul. And an easy catch. Takes out number 30, Will. Ooh. And a vicious, vicious headshot takes out number 35. And number 27, Eder Conejo goes out for WKU. So that will make it 1-1 with 5.26 left in the first half. 